Can we do multiple nested frames in native script Angular? Well, yes, we can, but do we really need it? In this video, we'll take a look at using nested frames in Angular, what are the use cases, and we'll also talk about whether we really need it or not. Coming right up. Hey everybody, welcome back, this is Alex. You guys remember the fuzzy blue earmuffs? So I've created a few videos here in the last couple of months about using multiple nested frames and what the use cases are. We've done this for NativeScript Core and NativeScript View, and you can do really cool things with it, like bottom sheet animation. And if you're doing ads in your application or you need something, some kind of overlay on your screen on any page of your application, no matter where you are, and you wanna share that, nested frames is a good way to do that. And you kept asking me how to do this in Angular. Well, today we're taking a look at how to do this in Angular, how we can do nested frames. We're actually gonna use a technique I just showed a few weeks ago about fetching the root frame, and I'm gonna show you how that works with Angular as well. If you haven't seen that video or the nested frame videos in the past, check those out as well. And we'll also take a look at what Angular gives us that's special, that's different than the other frameworks. And maybe you don't even need nested frames. The way Angular is set up in NativeScript, frames are kind of transparent. They're there, but they're not really there, and you don't have to interact with them if you don't want to. But you also can interact with them, and we'll take a look at both methods in this video. If you're new here, please consider subscribing to this channel. You'll help me out a lot, and you'll get your NativeScript tips, tricks, and tutorials. All right, let's go ahead and have a look at this. All right, here we are. This is a brand new NativeScript Angular application, and it looks something like this. You have your list of football players, and you have the details page. This is the native navigation, so we are using frames here by default. But if you're familiar with NativeScript Angular applications, you'll know that there are no frames in the UI. So here's app component. This is the root component, and you'll see page router outlet here. There's no mention of a frame like you have in NativeScript View or NativeScript Core. If you go to some of the other elements like the items component this is where our list of football players is displayed right here there are no frames here either nor are there frames on the detail page so what's going on are there actually frames in our native script angular application or not well yes there are frames here but they're hidden so this whole video is about getting multiple frames set up but let's first take a look at how we can detect frames and then we'll see how we can set up multiple frames. Multiple frames are useful for layering content on top of each other. And a good scenario for that is a bottom sheet. So if you haven't seen my bottom sheet tutorial, check that out on this channel as well. All right, for discovering the frames, I created a video here not too long ago. And together we wrote up some utility functions. I'm going to call a new file here called utils.ts. And I'm going to paste those utility functions that we've defined together into this file. If you haven't seen that tutorial check that out as well it's pretty useful i explain how to develop and why we're developing each one of these functions specifically this function is the one we want to use is get top ui frame you also have other utility functions here that are pretty useful like get element by class name which we can use as well here let's head over to our items component here i'm going to give us a little bit more space here so we can see what's going on in our simulator at the exact same time I'm going to close out our terminal here. Okay, so here's our simulator. This is basically the page that we're seeing in the code right here. I'm going to clean up all the comments here. We have an action bar at the top. We have a grid layout. And what I want to do is separate this grid layout into our list at the bottom and a button that we can tap. We want to tap a button so that I can trigger an event and look through our hierarchy of views. So I'm going to define a tap event here and I'm going to call it on tap. And let's give this button a text tap. All right, there's our button. And now that we have two children of the grid layout, we need to define the rows. So the button will go in the top row, which is going to be 60 pixels high or dips high, I should say. And then the list view is going to be in row one. So let's see what that looks like. There we go. We have the list underneath the button. So when I tap this button, I want a handler to happen. I'm going to just open this up real quick so we can go to the code. There's the component code. Let's close this back up. And I need to define a function called on tap here. And when I tap this button, I want to search through the hierarchy, the view hierarchy that we've created here. And I want to find the frame because we can't see it in the code. So where is it? All right. So I'm going to create another utility function here called search. So I'm going to go back to my utils.ts and export a function called search. 
let's say we want to use this get elements by class name right here. So I'm going to create a constant called root frame because that's what we want to search for. And I want to call get elements by class name. And if you've seen my video on the class names that the root frames automatically get as of native script version six, the topmost UI frame gets this NS root class automatically appended to it by the framework. And this function returns to us an array of any element that matches that class name. I'm going to take the first element and I'm going to cast this as a view, which is a native script class, all the UI elements inherit from view. And all I want to do is just say console.log here. And I'm just going to log out the root frame itself. All right, now I'm going to go back to my items component. And when I hit tap, I'm going to run that search function. Oops, search is what I want. For some reason, it's not being auto imported. So I'm going to reload here and oh, we lost our spot. Let's go back to items component here. There's search. And now I get the little light bulb so I can automatically import this. Great. So I'm going to save that. So on tap, we're running search, which goes to utils, runs this search, finds the element NS root, and then prints it out. I'm going to open up the console here. I'm going to go to the console. I'm going to hit tap here and we get printed out from utils frame two. So so that's the frame. We found the frame. See, I wasn't lying. It's there. You can't see it, but it's there. Now, if we go to search here, we don't have to use this get element by class name. We also have another function that does this for us. And that's get top UI frame. That's a simpler function that doesn't do any kind of digging through the hierarchy. So const root frame equals get top UI frame. And that's all I need to do when I print that out. Let's see, I'm going to hit tab here and there it is. All right, so we're only getting one frame, right? How do we find how many frames there are already? Because, well, we don't know. We can't see how many frames there are, but it feels like there should be more than one frame, right? Because there is the app component here and has a page router outlet. And then you can render things inside the page router outlet, like in the navigation screens. So I feel like there should be more than one frame. Let's see how we can discover how many frames there are already in our native script angular application. And I'm going to create a couple of new utility functions here for us. Right now we have get elements by class name, but I can also create another one called get elements by element type. So that'll take, uh, let's say the element name, we want to pass in things like frame or page or button and be able to find that. And it follows a very similar form to what we had here. I'm just going to copy and paste that in. And instead of class name, we're just going to say element name, but we want to dig through the children as well. And we want to get view children by element name, not class name. So we need this function as well. And to do that, I'm going to copy this function, get view children by class name. And all this is is just a recursive function that digs through the hierarchy. And here I'm going to say get view children by element name, I'm going to rename that function, we want to have the element name passed in as a string. And then we're going to aggregate all those elements into this view base array. So this condition right here, if v.css classes, we were looking at CSS classes, but instead, what we want to do is look at the type name, the type name is going to give you whether it's a button or a label or or something else or a frame in our case that we want to look for, right? So we want to compare the type name to the element name that we pass in. And if that's the case, we're going to push that onto the array. And then we're going to look through each of the children and run the same exact function on it recursively passing in the view, the element name, and then the aggregate array. All right, that completes our utility functions. Pretty simple. So going back over here, I'm going to comment these out. And I'm going to say const all frames, because I want to look for all the frames equals get elements by element type. And I'm going to pass in the element name, which is frame. All right, so let's do that. This is going to give us an array of frames. I'm going to console log here, how many frames I got. So let's say number of frames and all frames dot length. Okay, let's go ahead and save that. And I'm going to run our search. Let's open up the console here. I'm going to hit tap and we get number of frames is one, huh? Only one frame. Okay, well, how do we do the, all those cool things that I showed before when we had multiple frames in angular, then if we only have one frame available to us? Well, you can also have multiple frames in Angular, but I'm going to show you how to do that. And then I'm going to show you that you don't actually need that. So let's open up our root app component here where we have the page router outlet. I'm just going to delete this comment here. Page router outlet is where we render our navigation stack. All right, so I'm going to wrap this in a frame element. 
And a frame element cannot exist without a page element. So I'm gonna also add a page element here as well. Let's go ahead and do that. And the formatting is not cooperating with me here. All right, so I now added another frame and a page, and then I wrapped the page router outlet and all that. So now I have nested frames. Now, when I go back out here to our console and I hit tab, now you see the number of frames is two. So we have the topmost frame, which you don't see. Then we have this frame that we've defined, which we actually shouldn't do in Angular, but you'll see in a minute how we can avoid doing that. And I don't know why it's red, but it may be red because it says, oh, look, don't do this. Don't do this in native script Angular, please. I'm thinking it's yelling at me, but I don't know really why it's red. Maybe somebody can let me know down in the comments below. So now that we have the frame, the page, and the page router outlet, we, since this is just a regular page, we can actually just define layouts here. So here's a grid layout, and we're putting the page router outlet inside of the grid layout, which will work exactly the same way. So if I save this, I can still navigate my list and go from the list page to the details page and then back. Everything still works exactly the same. But now that I have this layout here, what I can do is actually put things here. For example, I can add a label. Let's say I have the text bottom label. Okay, so there's my label and it's showing up in the middle of the screen here, bottom label, but we can control that. So let's uh, do a vertical alignment and I'm gonna set that to bottom. Since we're inside of a grid layout here, that's why we have that issue. So vertical alignment will go ahead and stick that label on the bottom as you can see there. And I wanna see it a little bit better. So I'm gonna add a class to it. Let's give it a class of bottom label like that. And we need to define this class. So I'm gonna open up my app.css here and define the bottom label class just like that. Let's give it a nice background color property. Um, Aquamarine sounds nice. Let's also give it a height of 60 and let's give it a width of 100% to stretch it all the way out. All right, so there's our bottom label and you can see that it's on top of our list. Now, we still have those two frames. So if I hit tab here, you'll see that we have the number of frames being two and we have the bottom label, which will give us the ability to actually have a bottom sheet if we really want to. And if we need to animate it up and down, check out my tutorial on the bottom sheet if you wanna see how to do that. But there's still that lingering question of frame, page and being able to define those. Do we need that in native script Angular? Well, if this is all you wanna do, then the answer is no. So let's go ahead and delete these wrapping frame and page elements and just leave the grid layout. And as you can see, the result will be exactly the same. We can still navigate back and forth here. We have that bottom label that's always sticky and it's on top of our page router outlet, on top of the list and on top of the details page. But now we only have the one frame at the very top because in native script angular that's all you really need anybody that's using native script angular now has a way to do this let's take a look at some of your comments from this video that i did a couple weeks ago where you can get elements by css class name shiva says thank you for sharing this alex you got it shiva and good to see you here on this channel nathaniel anderson says just an fyi the native script dom plugin has all the get elements by functions and also adds classless functionality. And of course, Nathaniel is a huge contributor to NativeScript plugin ecosystem. He's the creator of Pro Plugins, where you can actually subscribe to plugins packages and get really well-maintained new up-to-date plugins. And there is a ton of them there. So check that out if you haven't heard of Pro Plugins before. And Rohan Kumar says, can you tell me one thing as I'm using Angular Framework so it works the same on it? Well, yes, it does, because you're using native script functionality here. And whether you're using Angular or Core or Vue, you're using the same elements to do those things. It's like if you're on the web and you're using a div and you want the class name of a div, you can still get that class name. And Chaz Scott says, I'm relatively new to programming. Why hasn't NativeScript created a select elements by class name function? NativeScript already has get view by ID, but why not get element by class name already? By the way, great tutorial. Thanks Chaz and thanks for stopping by. The NativeScript team has 
a ton of things to do. They have a huge backlog of items that people wish and want to have in their applications. And yeah, this is something that should be part of the framework, but it's not really something that you commonly use or use all the time. You can write apps without this. So that's why it's not a really super high priority thing. It is a convenience function after all, and it's not uh, very difficult to write yourself as you saw in that video. Thanks everybody for leaving your comments and thanks for watching. If you're not subscribed yet, please consider subscribing and you can always tweet me, I'm at Digitalix on Twitter and I'll see you in the next one. Happy native scripting.